Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you around some of the areas of the Houston Museum of Natural Science that I haven't had a chance to explore on camera before. When I was growing up, my family always made a lot of museum trips, and I've kept up the habit wherever I happen to be living or visiting. One of my earliest museum memories is of seeing the taxidermy animals at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The animals were arranged in environments that looked like their natural habitats. I was fascinated by those animals, and when I came to the Houston Museum of Natural Science, I was excited to see that they also had rooms full of animal displays. I also had a chance to walk through the Pompeii exhibit that's currently at the museum. This statue of Venus was stunning. I also saw these bowls of dye pigments that had been preserved in the ashes. These were probably intended to dye fabric. You can still recognize the texture of the fruit and grain in these bowls of raisins, pears, and barley. I always like to stop and watch the clock pendulum. If you're there at just the right time, you can watch it knock over a pin. So the main area that I'm visiting today is the Morian Hall of Paleontology. I've always loved dinosaurs, and it's a real challenge to sketch and paint all the complicated details in their bones. Unfortunately, part of the hall was blocked off so that they could do some kind of electrical work in the ceiling, so I wasn't able to film a full walkthrough. I ended up heading for my favorite skeletons, the Tyrannosaurus rex and the Triceratops. I decided that the Triceratops would be easier to sketch since it didn't have all those teeth. Teeth are very time consuming to draw, just so you know. I also decided to focus on the skull. The last time I drew dinosaur bones, I tried to draw a complete skeleton and realized that it would have taken me many, many hours to correctly render all those bones. I apologize for the grainy quality of my video from here on out. The hall was very dim and only had spotlights pointed at the dinosaurs, so my camera didn't have quite enough light to get a really clear shot. I started off as usual by loosely sketching the Triceratops skull, then gradually refining the features. I checked from time to time that everything was in proportion and that the eye socket and nose weren't too far apart. Another artist with a sketchbook came to sit on the bench across from me, so I had someone to talk to while I was drawing. People love to strike up conversations with you while you're creating art in public. You sort of become an interactive part of the museum exhibit. Today I'm using my watercolor pencils. I want the area of the skull to be a deep black so that the skull itself will stand out really brightly against the background. I'm shading the area around the skull very heavily. One thing I've learned about watercolor pencils is to build up my colors and values while the paper is still dry before adding water. Once the paper gets wet and soft, drawing over it will leave lines and grooves, and the pigments don't blend as well. So do most of your work before adding water. I'm now adding water with my brush pen. This part feels like magic. Once you add water, the pencils really do work like normal watercolors, so it's easy to soften any hard edges and blend the paint together. Now I'm adding color to the skull. It's a mix of browns, reds, yellows, and a hint of blue from the lights. Again, I'm building up the color and values as much as possible before adding water. I'm adding extra pencil and pigment in the areas where I know there will be shadows. This will help the skull look three-dimensional.
It's easy to layer and blend different colors just like you would with normal colored pencils. And then again, watch the magic happen when you add water. I try to add just a little water at a time to keep my paper from turning into a giant puddle and all the colors melting together. Another trick I learned is to use the dry edge of my paper like a paint palette. I can scribble down some pencil, then wet it and lift the paint over to the area where I want to add it. This means I don't have to draw directly on wet paper and risk messing things up. I'm just about finished. Right now I'm still refining the shadows and highlights and adding a little bit of blue to contrast with all the warm reds and yellows. In a few areas where I want a highlight, I add a little clean water, then lift it up with the edge of a paper towel. Thank you to the Houston Museum of Natural Science for allowing me to film and sketch there, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Here's the completed Triceratops skull.